Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is May, what is it? May 6, 2015. And um, this is the second within three weeks uh, time when we've gathered to just talk about youthvoices.net. Um, I like to call these the open staff meetings. So, but they're but especially um, wanted to get some teachers who are new to Youth Voices, just getting started with Youth Voices together. And so did, uh, some inviting like that. And a few of you have come, which is great. And you'll introduce yourselves in a second. Chris Sloan and I, um, who is on the call here as well, started this site, uh, I, I'm saying a dozen years ago now. Um, and um, and have gone through various iterations. So, and Karen Fassenpower, I think you've all met um, online, but um, is uh, our community organizer, I'd like to say. So, got some um, other introductions to do here. Um, and our goal is really to, to have an open conversation to kind of figure out what we want to do next, what's going well. <coughs> I will say briefly that. Um, I've noticed that April and May are times to kind of test things out sometimes and see what might work for the fall. So if you're doing that or if you have done some that, we can talk about that. Um, Chris, do you want to uh, do your take on an introduction here? Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, and so, um, like Paul said, I've been using Youth Voices in my English classes and then also in my media and photography classes. But um, this year, I think we're using it a lot more in my uh, English class. I teach an AP English language and composition class for seniors. And um, so, I mean, in a nutshell, I like Youth Voices because it just, like, there's an audience for my students writing and that conversation is so important to writing, I think. Great. And just up next, Gabrielle. Hi, I'm Gabrielle. I'm an English teacher in Queens at Queens Metropolitan High School. And I was a part of the summer program last summer, experimenting and exploring with Youth Voices. And I started working in a new school this year, so I just recently was able to carve out a place for myself to start experimenting with Youth Voices with my students. Um, I have one section of students who are repeating English, so they've failed English before and they are in two English classes a day, um, which is a, a class that I have a lot of flexibility with, which is really great. And uh, the students have started posting and they're starting to get comments from other kids and they're really excited about it. So um, I'm excited to see what happens with the rest of the semester. Do you teach both of those English classes, or do they have others, other teachers? No. I'm, so I teach ninth grade English, and then I have this one section of upperclassmen. So they're enrolled in either 11th grade or 12th grade English, and then they also see me Got for it. a second English class of the day. Cool. So I want to come back to that carving out question, um, but we will in a second. Um, Jessica, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is my first year using Youth Voices, and um, I'm sorry, my vo I have a sore throat right now, so my voice sounds a little funny. Um, but I am using it with my mostly with my um, honors students. So I actually have regular students and all my class or regular track students. But I teach in a public health academy, and this year we piloted double coding our class so that there's an honors track as well, which has been a really cool uh, mixture of things. You know, all sort of trickles around the classroom in terms of what the honors kids are doing um, ends up trickling into what everybody else is doing. So I have them do something called a will you, which is a little um, a little sort of extension and often it has a public health focus. So if we're reading um, uh, if we're reading Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, I, we talk about emotional appeals and I ask them to do some research into how public health campaigns use emotional appeals, so things like that. And then they write and post and it's been just so great because um, I really wanted to have them not just write for me for the, for the honors um, class and have them write for a wider audience. So it's been wonderful to use Youth Voices and of course I'd like to use it more with all of my students. Very cool. Did you say where you're from? Oh, sorry. I'm from Oakland, California. 
And it's Oakland High School. Oakland right? High School, yes. And, but it's a health institute within the high school, is that right? Yeah. So about okay. four or five years ago, we started a public health academy at our school, and it's specifically focused on public health, so looking at um, patterns within a population rather than one-on-one -on -one physician to patient health. So looking at the way things spread and the way um, the way we can make a, a whole population more healthy instead of just one-on-one -on -one relationship. Cool. So, Thank you. Welcome. It's been great. And Julie, back to uh, the East Coast here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie. Um, I also did Youth Voices last summer. And I'm an English teacher at Bronxdale High School in the Bronx, New York. Um, I've used it in my mostly in my advisory. Um, I teach ninth grade English and tenth grade English, but yeah, I wasn't really able to like incorporate it into those classes. But I was able to incorporate it into my advisory because that curriculum is more flexible. Um, and so I used it mostly, I guess, for the kids to write about themselves. So all of the missions that we did, you know last summer. I did that with them and then had them comment on each other's. Um, I feel like most of them were not into it, which I didn't understand because the kids in the summer were really into it. Um, mm -hmm. There was a couple, like maybe one or two, um, but yeah, no, I, I feel like most of it was, I didn't, I wasn't getting like a lot of positive feedback from them about experiencing it and how they experienced it. Maybe that was because I didn't have them communicating so much with kids in other cities, and maybe that would have made a difference. Um, and they were just writing about themselves, so maybe if it was also more... I did the, the questions thing where they have to create their own questions and then they have to, like, kind of do their own research from that, but um, I think only one of them got was into it. And also it's advisory, which is pass-fail, so that may also be different. Like, maybe if it was an English class and it was a more... Um, it had more of a focus and connected to my curriculum, it might have gone better. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still open to using it and I'm, I'm open to suggestions as well as to how to make it, how to incorporate it more into um, my English curriculum. Very cool. I, I, I love the tone that you've helped us set here, Julie, with uh, some you know, <laughs> critical thinking about mm -hmm. you know, what we're really trying to do here. Karen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Karen. Um, I live in Arizona and I'm not in the classroom right now but I do work in a lot of different online spaces around education and I love Youth Voices and I'm available for any um, troubleshooting or tech support or inputting student lists or other random tasks if I can help. I'm around. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I have a couple of big questions, but and I'll I will pose them just so I'm not so I will and but but I really would love to hear what your thoughts and questions where you'd like this to go. Um, the sort of ongoing always question, and um, it's totally represented. I think um, Jessica in in your work, which um, if we could, but others too, but. Um, the, the will use uh, are really fascinating and, and wonderful. Um, and I keep wondering how could we, I mean, the way that we talk about this with children is that there's a lot of, par that there's parallel play that happens, right? Um, and play is great and, and every once in a while there's overlap, but it's accidental. So how could we start to be a little more thoughtful, um, planful uh, um, ab about doing projects together on Youth Voices in some way so that the kids connect more um, around the content. That's one of my questions. Without giving up the sort of, um, and I'm saying this slowly, I don't know why, but without giving up the, the teacher innovation stuff that happens and the um, individual inquiry that happens with kids. So that's, those are some of my questions as I leap in here. Um, and then I, I was wondering if, if, 
you can just go ahead whatever you want, and, and I, I'm just putting this all front so then I'll shut up for a while. But <laughs> the other question I had for the for the, especially the three of you who are new to youth voices is, where does your curriculum planning come from, and how do you continue to see youth voices connecting to that or not? Um, so those are some of my questions. Um, those and those weren't very inviting, but I'll put them out there and then just say, "What are you thinking right now?" Anybody jump in? And we'll interrupt you. Yeah. Can you just clarify the first question about working together? Do you mean working together across different different schools, or working our students working together on Youth Voices? Post. Somebody else want to clarify that? Karen, you're shaking your head. Well, I would say, I mean, across schools, I think where it's worked, we've seen some really incredible things happen. And so we're always thinking about, and I mean, things we've talked about before are like taking a project and making it a mission and having different schools work on that. Because I think, you know, what we've seen is students can really comment and interact more meaningfully if they're if they're working on something in common and a lot of times the topics that students are passionate about they do run across schools mm -hmm. but it's just like the logistical challenge of how, you know how does this work so we've also talked about doing some kind of like a mini MOOC or or an online some kind of unit that might be I mean as short as a couple weeks or as long as maybe four to six weeks um, around something that that ties across schools so in the past we've brainstormed like if a couple schools are doing a similar piece of literature or a similar theme or we've talked about doing the getting started stuff at the beginning of the year sort of as a group and then I think the third opportunity that comes to my mind is um, Youth Voices Live which is a thing we've done um, not every Friday, but we sort of have a common time where a couple classrooms have gotten together with their kids on a hangout just like this, and we've talked about um, that we've used the Ask Big Questions curriculum, and I think, you know, that's, all of these things are not something that, like, everybody's going to do, but if there were a few classrooms where it made sense, so I don't know if any of that resonates with anybody. But. Well, and um, one other thing that I think worked pretty well this year was... Um, so I have my kids doing a research paper right now, and um, so periodically they would just blog, like, here's what I found in my research today. So they would just blast that out there. And uh, one time, uh, it actually started with Dawn in Michigan, I think. Or no, wait, who did the surveys first? Was that... Uh, Joanna did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Joe in um, Fremont in Oakland. Her students were doing research, too, and they put up... Uh, a survey uh, on youth voices and and then I you know directed Paul or Karen um, set up a page that had all the surveys on it and so then I said to my students one day hey um, let's check these out and can you help these people out can you choose a survey and just um, fill it out for them and then um, recently I had my students um, in their research uh, paper sequence part of it was like you know, doing a survey, an online survey. And so then um, I think Dawn in Michigan and, and maybe Joe's students, they also returned the favor. So that was kind of an interactive thing. So, like, the, the students got more uh, enthused about it when they got feedback from people that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. and, and But it was a common kind of project in the sense that they really, they almost needed the broader perspective, especially for some of their research topics. And so to me, that was kind of an easy entry for my kids to see what other students were doing and then to see, like, oh, if I do that, I'd like to get some help on mine. Mm -hmm. So that was one example that I thought worked pretty well and, and pretty painless because, like, we've got this community and we're doing research, so at some point, survey the community. Mm -hmm. I know my students also, I said this before, um, got, I think I've had two students now who have received comments from only kids two. in other parts of the country. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. No, only two? We need to up that a little bit, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. Well, we, you do, we you do have started, a, right? Okay. You do have a school page, though, right? I think you do. Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, we, good. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just a little, 
little anecdote. One of my students posted, uh, we did Where I'm From poems in the style of Perry Thomas, and there's no mission for that yet, but I could certainly experiment with creating one. Uh, and they posted them on their pages, and my one a one student had written like about four lines, and he got a comment back. So when he opened up the computer in the next class, he saw the comment, excited about it, and then he sat down with a paper and started to expand his poem because the student the comment was, "I really like your poem. I wish that you had written more." So I thought that was really encouraging to see a student say like, "Oh, I really want to, you know, meet." meet this request and sit down and, and make my writing even better, make it longer because somebody else liked it and read it that I don't know. So I know Julie, you had asked earlier about like how to get your students more excited about it and I know I mean, we're just starting but already I could see that happening in the classroom so I'm definitely going to capitalize on it and try to get them to keep you know posting more and commenting on other people's and hopefully it comes back to them. That's cool. And cool. if anybody has projects where you're really you're like looking for um, comments, just email Paul or I, and we can kind of. And there's also um, there's a channel now for teachers, so you could also post it there. But we can kind of get the word out and make sure that people are commenting on current stuff. Yeah. So just so you know how it works, like in my classroom, every time they post, I say you have to make at least two comments on other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. And lately, I've been saying, okay, you can choose someone from our school. But you have to choose someone from, and then I'll, I'll list a couple schools that I know are actively seeking some input. And, mm -hmm. and so, that, so that's like 75 students mm -hmm. that are ready to do some, um, you know, some feedback for other schools. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that's a lot of potential hits for students. And, and I think, like my students really, something happens when it's from a comment from another school that they didn't know because... Like, um, I noticed in my own school, when I say make one comment on, a, on our class and make one, at least one on another school, they tend to go to their same physical groups. Like, you know, it's kind of funny that, like, they comment on the group, their clique that they're already a part of. And I think, um, partly, I think, Julie, what I noticed is um, that that's okay because there's some social needs, you know, that they're they're meeting there. But um, it also can break down if that's all we were to do. Like if I just said, or if I set up a classroom blog and said, hey, kids, let's write stuff and, and write stuff to each other. Um, there's some added value to when they get these feedback from these people and then they're like, where are they from? And, and it's just kind of this, there's always conversation about some comments that they got. Okay, cool. Where was that? All right. Where was the place you said um, teachers can post and put up like the things that they're working on? It's a it's a teacher channel. So if you do a post and you go into where it says you put the channel. So you just post a discussion post and then just choose teachers teaching teachers <coughs> as the as the channel. And if you want to see it, you can just go to channels and find it. There's not a ton of stuff right there right now there, but it's kind of new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of related to that, I wonder, I mean, I would love to do what Karen mentioned, having, you know, if I know two other teachers are teaching something that I'm working on, that makes so much sense to link to have the kids do, even if it's just one day of a central question, or even sort of a Socratic thing, but it's with other students in other schools. Um, so if there were some place to post just the, you know, the here are the six novels or the four novels that I teach, or the... Yeah, that's a good idea. That's where they teach. That would be nice to just sort of scroll through and see, oh, here's somebody in New York teaching if Beale Street could talk, and here's somebody teaching Death of a Salesman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did have a page. I'll see. I'll get the link. But we did have a page where people, when we were talking about this MOOC idea, people were posting. But I, I don't, maybe we could think about it for next year. I don't know that it went very far, but I'll post that when I find the link. Or, yeah, like a page of like a bunch of different books, and then you can, if your students or you're in the in that unit working on it, you can have your students like post under that category. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, Jessica, you keep um, a blog, right? <clears throat> I mean, you put all of your assignments up on a blog. Uh, no, kind of. 
Um, I oh. put all the all the HP assignments up on a blog. Yeah. Um, I put anything anything we do in class that where the kids need to go to a link for something. Then I put that up on the class blogs. But yeah, for the HP students, I put everything on the blog. Okay. And and I subscribe to that using Feed Reader, right? Mm. So so <clears throat> I'm just wondering if there might be a way for us. And Chris, you you put your assignments on a blog too, right? Yeah, I have and just a too. Google Sites page for my class. Yeah, yeah. that too, just a Google Site. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I guess the question is, how much how much of our curriculum is um, locally kind of tied to local circumstances? And how much planning ahead would it take to actually get together? What do you mean get together? That, well, I'm. Well, Jessica just suggested that if we, if well, Jessica mentioned some of your your topics, like like the health interviews. I thought were fascinating, um, mm -hmm. and and so, like I would I would have loved to see those health interviews happening in different cultures and different cities, and you know, mm -hmm. it would have been a rich. Um, kind of interaction, I thought. So, like the mm -hmm. the actual procedure and content would have been really interesting to have, and, rather than just responses to each other. Yeah. Right. And, and Jessica, just so you know, um, next year there's going to be a teacher from my school also coming on Youth Voices, and um, he's really interested in doing kind of a food lit um, kind of um, sequence, and I I am too. Um, so to me, like there's automatic overlap. I'm guessing with like your health unit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I should have said I'm an English teacher in the beginning. I forgot to say that, but we do read some quite a bit of nonfiction that relates to to cultural things around um, health, and of course, food ties into that. I mean, I I wonder if the um, I feel like the missions kind of do what we're talking about. You know, if I actually just took the time to sit down and look over the missions, and I mean, I think you know, as teachers, we our our greatest lack is time. So, so if we just sit down and look over the missions, I think that thematically, I could probably always find something that ties in with the unit I'm doing. Um, you know, right now I'm teaching if Beale Street could talk, which which ties in. It's my first time teaching it, but it, it ties into so much of what's happening with um, Ferguson and Baltimore and all of the things that have been on Youth Voices. So I, I could easily have my students um, link it to some of the things that are on there already. And But also Bach Poetry, by the way. And I think that might be its youth. So you can just search for it, but I think it might just be Bach, youthvoices.net slash Bach, um, which I don't know if you'll find that connected or not, but the teacher... Uh, Carla Cherry, who put that together, um, thought it was it came out of Bill Street um, and, and the whole notion of it. So she has some explanation to that effect. Um, but then, yeah, but but I'm, I'm just, but I'm also quickly thinking that if you went and had your kids do the bot poetry stuff, those kids aren't necessarily around right now on Youth Voices, so there's always that issue. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's fine. But say more about um, how how it relates to Ferguson and uh, I mean, I just I just put together a whole mission that's under YouthVoices.net slash Freddie Gray, right? Um, I saw about, that, yeah. about Baltimore and so forth, mm -hmm. um, and it's all connected to now comment. Um, Stuff as well, hoping hoping that there's way there are ways to connect there. So, yeah. So dealing with like a, a contemporary issue is is another way to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, so, yeah. But even that issue would relate to. I mean, like we're reading down these mean streets in my class, which is all about racism. Mm -hmm. So that would. Like now I'm thinking I could easily get my kids up and doing one of those missions and making connections between what we're reading and what they're finding on Youth Voices. So maybe it's more about um, linking things thematically than about um, 
the specific book that we're teaching. Although it would be cool for them to talk about, like, I'm reading Bodega Dreams. Mm -hmm. It would be cool if they could, and they're really into it. And that rarely happens, in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, it would be cool if they could talk about that. Those book. three books are wonderful together. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Sorry, Julie, what were you saying? No, I was just going to say it would be cool if they could, like, write about that and talk to other kids in other schools and cities or whatever about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let me, push the th let me push the three of you for a second, though. How, what would it take, though, because... I think a lot of it's, this is also about nimbleness of our own teaching um, so that, yeah, I'm doing Bill Street, right? But on Youth Voices, there are these two other books that kids are doing. How, how possible would it be to say, you know, I don't want to read Bill Street. I want to read Down These Mean Streets. Um, and then... So how possible is it to mix mix things up because of youth voices within your own classes? Change the curriculum, what you're do, what you're reading because of it. Yeah. I mean, I would do that, but it would have to be something that I'm planning way in advance because of ordering so books, yeah. and whatever mm -hmm. you need the resources, and you know, making a curriculum map and making it make sense within that. Mm -hmm. Talk about curriculum map. What do you mean by that? A curriculum map, like I mean, you know, is that is that like a requirement in your own school? And so I keep wondering if yeah, so requirements requirement. in our own schools limit our nimbleness with each other. Do you guys not have to do curriculum. Map? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not 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 everybody has to do a curriculum map the same way. But most people are. I mean, I th a lot. Most of the schools I work with, I would say, are very. I mean, I would say constrained, and and not that there's not ways to sort of work around that, but I think, you know, looking at what's the reality in your school and what's possible, then you can kind of shape something that works. Are either of you reading Bodega Dreams with your kids? No, but I'm intrigued. I have it in my classroom in my in my um, independent reading books, but I've never read it. Well, you should read it. It's really good. Yeah, I think you read Gatsby. You're reading The Great Gatsby with your kids? No, I mean, I reread Bodega Dreams after reading The Great Gatsby. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like the Spanish version of The Great Gatsby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know right. when we started it. Go ahead, Don Reed just and um, she couldn't make it tonight, but she you know she does this whole unit around the Great Gatsby, um, and so yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't feel um, nimble with changing with um, <laughs> teaching different books, and it's nothing to do with my administration. I just it takes me a while to plan a, a whole unit around a book and to really you know sink into it. Like, what do I really care about the kids learning from this book, and what do I want to really do throughout the unit. I, I know that some people are more nimble, but I'm certainly not, and <laughs> it's just because of me. <laughs> well, I think that's a real challenge, though, in, in incorporating youth voices, though. It's like, it is sometimes hard, you know, it's, it's a challenge enough to put something together for your context that makes sense, that works for those kids, and then sometimes I think, I'll tend to think of it as, oh, there's something else, and, and that doesn't work too well. But um, what do you mean? There's something else. Well, you know, like oh, this is another layer that has to work. But um, I think when youth voices works well, it's more like um, when I'm not reading the same books as everybody else, which is like a lot of the time, right? Um, what I try to do is have them make it relevant to today. So you know. Um, how is this story relevant to your life and try to connect it to current events. And then I think actually there's been some good conversation around that and I think the kids don't mind writing those kinds of things. So I guess what I'm saying, you know, Jessica, is that um, if I think of it as an extra to this thing that I'm already doing that's already, you know, like makes sense for everybody right here in my local place right now, mm -hmm. that makes it hard, but um, just doing the thing like writing about a book, you know, you're reading Frankenstein, you know, how is that relevant today? Um, you know, like, they'll make connections that I think other 
students can see and comment on. Mm -hmm. So that to me is that's easier um, for I'm not always too nimble myself. I don't mm -hmm. know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think so. It was interesting you brought up current events because before you, before you said that I was thinking like is current events a way that makes sense to sort of think about connecting this? I think so. I think so too. I haven't really had my kids writing about current events, but it's something that I'm open to. I, <clears throat> I'd love to hear the three of you, and Chris, you join this too, but if you, like um, the three books you've mentioned, and Jessica, you just said something like um, it's you have to do a lot of planning to find what's essential, what you really want kids to learn from this book. Can the three of you say what you want kids to learn from the books you're working on now? Like, what is that that you want them to get? I mean, I mean, I, I current like events I in the background. Like but yeah, go ahead. I choose like books or excerpts based on like culturally responsive texts, I guess. So mm -hmm. no matter what it is, like I want to make sure that it can be like engaging and that the kids can connect to it. There may be like a, an excerpt thrown in, the, thrown in there just for like skill, like a high, you know, a reach text or something. But like the shared text that we read, like a novel, when we do that, it's usually, I usually think about culture. Mm -hmm. And why are your kids loving Bodega Dreams, do you think? I think for that reason. I think that, well, first of all, there's lots of curses in it and drugs, people selling drugs. <laughs> and those two things are, you know, it talks about girls, and I, I, yeah, I think that those are like, win them over a lot. Um, and it's familiar setting. Mm. Yeah, for Beale Street, I really want them to understand. Um, we we just started it, but I want them to understand what internal oppression does, what it looks like, and then how we can flip it and resist it instead of just letting it fester. So there's characters in the in the book who who um, treat other characters really poorly because of internal oppression because of these things that have sort of crept down into their souls. and um, But then I don't want to stay stuck there and look at, oh, yeah, this is really sad. <laughs> so we talk about how to, you know, um, we just did a little note-taking thing yesterday where they we looked at what causes internal oppression and you know how people who are in power don't want to let go of power, so we give these labels to other people, you know, all that stuff. And then um, talked about how if you flip the labels that get used to oppress that you can resist and and reappropriate reappropriate. So right now I'm thinking about some sort of a project where the kids do some writing or design something that's based on um, reappropriation of terms that are used to oppress. But I'm not quite sure where where that is going to go somewhere. Yeah, and see, you know what? In in that description, I think is is what where it's hard to connect them and and for good reasons and I, I, you know I, I don't I'm just pressing this idea a little bit because because it sounds like your curriculum is to some degree responsive to your to how your students respond to the text right and to what you're presenting I would guess that Bodega Dreams has a lot of similar things in it yeah, to do with totally. I mean, There's a lot of words that you mentioned, you know, like today we were reading yeah. this really shocking scene that has some really intense language and it's because, you know, because, um, well, it's because of internal oppression, but um, some of the words that are exciting to the kids I think can be used in a really cool way to talk about the power of language just like probably I haven't read Bodega Dreams but I imagine it's similar. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah I mean there you can definitely I, I haven't I guess I, I haven't focused on that aspect of it but that's definitely a large part of that's a large theme in the story yeah. We've talked before about sort of pulling out those themes and <laughs> in, encouraging cross classroom and cross school 
sort of reactions to that and like how you can write that in a way that the kids don't look at it and say, oh, I haven't read that book. I don't have anything to say about it. But yeah. I mean, just, you, you know, just hearing your description, like I think anybody could react to that without necessarily reading the book. But then, you know, people can bring in their own literature and experiences that sort of support that. Yeah, I mean, that makes me think, you know, what if they did, what if they picked one word that's used repeatedly in the book for some purpose? And they did some sort of a word chart. Like, how is this word used to oppress? How is this word used to empower? What is the history of this word? And where do you hear this word? You know, something. Where do you hear this word today? And then they were able to look at the same sort of assignment for bidet dreams and, re and respond in some way. Like, oh, this is similar to mine because. Or, oh, this makes like, me think what, about what, what word? Like, what do you... Like, what's an example of a type of word that you're thinking of? Um... Well, today we were talking about the B word because it came up a few times in the scene. So a word like that that the kids get really excited about and a word that they use all the time to disempower each other and that they really don't think is that is that important. To, I mean, that they don't think is that offensive and, and yet that has a history and that, um, you know, I think that they exhibit a lot of internalized oppression all the time at, at school with these words that they use with each other. It's cool. Cool idea. Another variation to like, you know, how to uh, adapt for everybody not reading the same book is, you know, sometime what I'll do is have them find a representative passage from a book, and and then like, what if you got your kids or and I got my kids on their free reading books to uh, find a passage and then read it aloud, record it in SoundCloud, and then you know put that clip as part of their post and then. Um, of them reading the book aloud? Them reading a passage from the book and then um, creating a post around it so that then as like when I my students click on your students thing um, like they could hear uh, at least a sample of the book and that maybe they could get up to speed a little faster and I think it would be good for the students creating the um, the sound thing too. That sounds cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder about the kids that are, you know, struggling readers or, you know, not confident in there. It's, it's even, I, I would I would argue, given the time, and, and, get, and if you, Luis Bosco, uh, Bosco's students, um, the ESL students, yeah, did yeah. this with Down These Mean Streets, by the way. Yeah. Um, and, um, and they actually created dramas and, and from the books and then recorded those dramas. Um, but they do a lot of practicing first. They do a lot of coaching yeah. and, and learning mm -hmm. how to, yeah. to do the reading and so forth. So yeah. And she so. found it very empowering for her limited English students. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, so all that recording is wonderful. And SoundCloud is great, by the way, but you can just download something and upload it onto Youth Voices, too. You don't have to use SoundCloud. But just a I second. could also work mm -hmm. with Shakespeare. Yeah. And the kids read that aloud because that's something that, right, fits with reading aloud and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I love the. Oh, sorry. sorry, yeah, I'm go. I just love the close reading. That I mean, we've been talking in my department about how for ESL kids and for kids, you know, just really struggling readers, that to be able to really understand really well, understand one passage is more worthwhile than sort of kind of not really understanding a whole book. Just to really be able to dig in and explain the significance of the words in the passage and really break it down and comment on it and have something meaningful to say about it yeah. to build those skills. And, and it's fun, you know, then it's fun to do it on Youth Voices. It adds a little, another element and the sound element too. Yeah. So, Gabrielle, do, um, you, as an example of how we miss each other, like you probably didn't even know Luis did that, no. um, right? Um, right. So. I need to find it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'll find it in a second, but. Yeah, so that that that's part of the issue is as is raising raising all this. But I I, I mean I'll, I can I can put that problem in the background. I I think Chris, you've been using the word sequence, and I think we're really close to maybe not a sequence, 
but a constellation of experiences that, like if we, if we all knew we were going to do the same kind of experience, if we all knew we were going to trace a word through a passage or something, um, and could identify that on the site as that's what we're doing right now, if we all knew we were going to record a passage, and, and we could agree on what that looks like in a mission, right? Um, I think we're I think we're kind of close to getting somewhere. And that they comment on each other's readings. Right. Yeah. Carrie, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> so just I was just thinking about so that people know what everybody's doing. Like, would it be helpful to have <laughs> some kind of like, here's the highlights of just what, and maybe just really short with links or something. I mean, I know everybody's email gets full of all these newsletters, so maybe that's not the way to do it. But I think there is cool stuff going on, and, like, it is hard to know what's. Yeah, there's got to be an easier way to know what everybody yeah. else is doing. How about when you're doing something, you just, like, forward an email? <laughs> forward an email to a bunch of people and be like, I'm doing this over the next three weeks. Yeah, we could have a better list of kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and if people want to forward it to me, I'm happy to compile it in a short, digestible way. I mean, I did that with, uh, sometimes I would say, you know, my students are going to be doing X in this next week, and I would, I sent it to the people who were really active on Youth Voices, and I said, you know, if you could comment on my students, I'll make sure they comment on yours, little quid pro quo kind of thing, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, that that's one way to do it, but I don't know if that was very effective either because that, you know, I only sent it to a couple people and I don't know if I didn't follow up to see if that worked well. So I've tried, but then, you know, sometimes you get so busy that it's like, I guess I should have sent that email, <laughs> you know. I mean, Chris, would you, if it was a short email with a summary of stuff, would you look at it or not? I think I would. And But I don't know, like maybe I, I think we should probably hear from, you know, everybody else, like, you know, Gabrielle, does that, do emails even register with everybody else? Because, you know, like, I'll, I'll say to my own students, like, hey, I emailed you something, they're like, oh. I don't read email. I don't actually read email. <laughs> okay. A lot of people don't read email. Gabrielle, um, we, I did say at the beginning we were going to ask you more about carving out, um, and you're in a brand new school, because it feels, it feels, this feels like an important issue. Like, if I remember what you said, you had to get enough independence from the other people in your department, um, and and you had to find a computer cart, right? I mean, yeah, that was that was a challenge. Um, so I, I started at a new school, and it, it there definitely was some adjusting. And the curriculum in my school is pretty set, and it doesn't necessarily come from administration, but the department gets, to, like we just had our meeting today where we sat down and decided what our texts are going to be for next year at each grade level. And once that's decided, it's pretty much set for the next year. So I came into a school and they said, you know, this is what you're teaching in ninth grade, these are the books that you're going to use, and I had the ability to make each lesson my own, but I pretty much stuck to the shell of the units that were in place before I even got there. Mm -hmm. And so not that I couldn't introduce something like Youth Voices and get other people on board, but it, you know, it wasn't something that I could do coming into a new school in September. Um, so, and I, there's also a responsibility at my school. There's a lot of collaboration within other teachers teaching the same subject and grade level as you. So, every, I would have to get everybody else on the same page and on board with something like this if it was going to be like dominating most of the unit. Uh, but but I do have this extra section that they gave me of these repeater kids, the like kids that nobody wants to teach. And um, mm -hmm. I was collaborating with another teacher on that for a long time, and then finally kind of got well enough into the year to feel like it was okay to ask if I could distance myself from planning with him a little bit and plan my own unit for the end of the year, which is how I was able to start using new voices. And the laptop cart was another situation. <laughs> But I finally found one that has enough for my kids that's usually available when I need it eighth period. So you know, it was it was an adjustment for me. I think there's potential, but it's um, 
you know, I, I would have to, like I said, really get everybody else on board with a project like this if I wanted to do it in, like, my ninth grade English class, which is a class that four other teachers at my school teach. Mm -hmm. I just saw that Louise is doing Bodega Dreams. Did, you what? Did, I, get that, did, did I, I get that mixed up with, I may have mixed that up. Then. But that's the what is the name thing that you were talking about, right? Did Louise uh, is doing this? Yeah, she's doing Bodega. I think they did, or is doing, I don't know, or... Parts I'm going to post the what's the name thing, and I just posted Bodega Dreams. Is that? Yeah, I, I think I said I, I said it was down these mean streets, but I think it was Bodega Dreams that they were working on. Yeah, I, like could, that I get those two books mixed that up that all is. the time. No. <laughs> that it looks like maybe the end of last year. Anyway. It would be. I, yeah. I think, Julie, you might have mentioned this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what exactly it would look like, but if there was a page sort of like a search page that had lists of different books that students had written about or done units around or missions around on Youth Voices in the past. Um, that you could either look up authors or you could look up book titles or you could look up even themes. Uh, I know there's the keyword aspect, but like when I first got on Youth Voices, I looked for Down These Mean Streets and I really had to like muddle through a lot of searches before I found kind of the stuff that I was looking for. So uh, that would be really cool if we could make it happen. So a list so, of books. So Karen, I, I started doing that. I think it's youth voices, okay. youthvoices.net slash books. Um, I started, what I started doing was clarifying the tags and then, and then using the tags to make a list. Um, but it, it's a tedious, long process. But, um, and then, Anyway, Maybe but you do themes under the books or something. I mean, I think yeah. the themes is a hard part for me. Mm -hmm. But everybody I, has a different themes. But anyway, okay. I, I also, when Dawn gets in this conversation, like she has done a lot of thinking and writing and um, has some ex around, and maybe Chris, you have too, around book groups, or around themes. Um, and and I, just, I just feel like... Um, I hear what you're saying about teaching whole books, but I also, and the value of that, but I also think that book groups provide a certain, um, it provides more openings for connections between us. Um, so I, that's just an idea worth thinking about, it seems to me. When do you know yeah. what you're all doing next year? Like, do you even know what grade, or is it like a last minute thing? Like, I know some of the schools I work with, they don't know until the week school starts even what grade they're doing, but. I'm in charge. I'm the head of the English department in my school, so I feel like I have, and I'm currently planning the curriculum now for next year. So I feel like I, ha I do have a lot of leverage to say what we're doing and what we're not doing. Like, when would you know what books you're reading next year? I mean, I already know some of them in my head, you know. How about the rest of you? <coughs> I, I, I know what I'm teaching and reading. You do? Part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know what grade levels I'm teaching, and I, I tend to stick with what I've developed and maybe introduce one new text per year. Hmm. So maybe we should do uh, uh, one of these sometime, like I don't know, the end of the year is crazy and summer's crazy, I don't know when's a good time, but if we could get Joe and Don and like really go through, because we did that one time where we went through what everybody's doing, mm -hmm. it seems like summer is a good time to think about that for next year maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well why don't yeah, we do it? We're going to have more time in the summer. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't take me long to just write out what I teach, you know. I'm happy to send it to anybody. Do it as a post in, teachers teach in the TTT <laughs> channel. Create a mission about the books that you're reading. What was that? Sorry. I'm just kidding. I said create a mission about the books that you're reading. <laughs> well, so, but, yeah, I was just about to say that. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, so like, like, what's the? I, I was going to ask this earlier. Um, is is there a um, a pivoting from your own classroom to always being reminded that oh, what would this look like if other people did it too? 
that we could encourage somehow. So, for example, the health interviews, and I don't, I'm sorry to harp on those, but those those were those feel like very generative, wonderful experiences those kids had. Um, like Jessica, if you could if you could say like, okay, my kids are having a great experience with this. Wouldn't it be great if they also got these from Skyline, right? <laughs> which mm -hmm. is a school in in your city also, which is using um, youth voices. Uh, you know, so, so it's it's. So I guess I'm I'm asking or challenging um, us to, to always be thinking about asking each other to get involved in our assignments. Mm -hmm. you hear, do you hear? So do you hear the shift there? Instead of like mm -hmm. finding things by accident or planning ahead of time, to mm -hmm. just kind of say I'm going to do. I'll use another example from you, Jessica. But I, I'm going to I'm going to do a, a a mashup of of the Raven, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd love to see what other people did too around that, right? So yeah. if there's a way to kind of announce that to us yeah. and say, you know, we're going to do this these two weeks, join us somehow. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. That, that would be an interesting thing if we could develop that habit somehow. I mean. Okay. The whole thing with email, if we just forward each other an email. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm doing this. Yeah. Chris, what were you going to say? Well, it kind of goes back to Karen's idea of some kind of blast. You yeah. know, if, if I got something that said, hey, what are you doing in the next couple weeks on Youth Voices, then that would force me to say what I'm doing in the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, then, 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 like, if that were sent out, you know, regularly to other people, maybe that would be better than the way I've done it, which is kind of like when I get it together to email the people, like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's that's good and I've done it, but I, I haven't done it enough. So I, I like, I just keep going back to Karen's thing of some kind of thing that alerts others, maybe in a fairly regular way. Um, like every two weeks or every week? Something like Maybe that. Every you know. two weeks. Yeah. And I mean, I, one, another thing I like about that is mm -hmm. people could subscribe and unsubscribe. And maybe we could... I mean, the thing about just emailing people, I feel like we miss people. Yeah. Like sometimes I see stuff that I didn't even know people were doing. And I don't mm -hmm. know. So is anybody doing anything between now and the end of the year you want to announce now? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I was uh, going to write an email. <laughs> 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 but here's what I was writing, uh, and that is... How uh, much time do you like, have? You guys end soon, right? Yeah, they just end... Uh, my seniors are done um, May 22nd. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, they're wrapping up their research unit that they've done. So I'm going to have them post what sometimes I've referred to as a white paper. You know, like this is going to be their their research and they're gonna they're gonna post an abstract and attach their final um, stuff there so mm -hmm. and it, I mean I know that sounds final but you know it is final um, they have been since you know February they've been posting some stuff um, just as blogs and so this will be their final thing so if anybody's up to looking at that that'd be great I actually posted that to the Teachers Teaching Teachers channel. So the white, the yeah, oh, great. <laughs> so let me come back on that for a second, though, because the, the white paper will they go up as PDFs? Yes. Okay, and the PDFs can be attached inside of a Youth Voices discussion post. Yeah, we did that last year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, <laughs> sorry, and then you can get a link, right? And mm -hmm. you can put it up in um, um, our guests next week um, in um, hypothesis, <laughs> and then we could, then we could then we could comment on each other's white papers. Okay, interesting. Okay. I mean, I know that sounded a little complicated, but I don't think it is that. Big no, that's thing. just one more step to what I was saying. So that works. Maybe there's three more, but yeah. It'd be nice yeah. to have like a specific directed thing like that because I think a lot of us have wanted to try hypothesis, but like mm -hmm. unless you send me something that says 
try it with this, like then I would probably be more likely to do it. Maybe that already happened. I don't know. <laughs> so that's cool, Chris. Let's let's figure that out. That, that's great. Yeah. Gabriel, what are you working on? Very at the end. Well, first of all, um, we we want to get in and get and get more comments on your student stuff. But that's one thing. Well, they usually post on Friday, so that's when we get the laptop card in, and so okay. they've already done a first draft, and they they try and type everything up. So, um, yeah, we're reading down these mean streets. I'm trying, you know, we're bringing I'm bringing in lots of resources, um, lots of great stuff that people from New York City Writing Project shared with me. So there's a lot of paragraphs where they're trying to synthesize ideas, these themes between poetry and the um, and the memoir, and so yeah, I think I have very few students in that class. I only have about 15 students, and only see about 10 of them. But there's there's a good 10 of them that have at least one or two things up there, and they should have more every Friday. So feel free to check it out. And I also did make it a requirement for them that they have to go and do a couple comments on other people. So. If you want to direct me to certain pages for them to look at when we get to those days, I'd be happy to send them your way. It's interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, that that assignment that you just said, I bet, is less vague. I mean, it felt, they, they're connecting poetry with the novel. Have yeah, you written, I mean, have you written out what that what that assignment is for them? It's essentially the controlling idea from the New York State region, the number 26. Um, mm -hmm. But we're using excerpts that we're reading, and then I'll bring a poem in and give them some sort of idea, and they have to figure out how both authors are um, expressing that theme. So, and I, Jessica, I, I just uh, I did hear you earlier say about the time thing, um, and and Karen and I are happy if you if you like send us. Uh, a kernel, a, a, a little bit of what your assignment is, we can start missions up. Um, and I think I've noticed it is, that. Um, it's, it's like magic. Uh, huh? <laughs> it's like... Oh, yeah, it's just been happening by magic. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the Raven one was great because I, I, I put that mission together and then sent a note to, um, to Don Reed and said, these are really cool. And she said, what? This isn't my assignment. <laughs> so, <laughs> here's, but here's 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 how here's how this could work. Sorry, and we're almost out of time. But I don't know if you noticed, but on that mission, I put the um, the lit genius um, version of the poem, which has lots of annotations from other people on it. Um, so it's it was like hmm. it was taking your assignment and then kind of adding a, a twist into it as well. Oh, I didn't um, notice that. I'll go back and look. Yeah. Cool. So, so we can do that for each other. You know, that's that's what's kind. Of, but what else are you doing this this year? Quickly. Me. Yeah. Um. Just my students are just texting each other all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, are, we are reading. <laughs> don't they wish? Uh, we are reading. Uh, we just started. If Beale Street could talk, and that's what we're ending the year with. Okay. And I'm actually doing it, uh, so I teach 10th and 11th grade, but it's my first year doing Beale Street, and I decided to just try it with all my classes because nobody's read it yet. And um, that's been a fun experiment. I'm just trying to see which grade level it's best for. Mm -hmm. so I usually would be teaching two different things, but that's what I'm teaching right now. Cool. Yeah. Julie. Um, I feel like the end of the year is... There's, it's over. We're like teaching them, we're like making sure they know how to write argument essays for the Mosul um, mm -hmm. so that we all still can have jobs. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I got <laughs> it. <laughs> and then maybe there's like a week in June where I could do whatever I want with them. Yeah. Mm. And I have no right. plan. So if anyone... If anyone cool wants to say something, say some a week-long plan to do, then I'm open to that. Well, I'm glad you're hanging in there. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> I, hear, I hear you saying that. The, um, but, but also, like, as the English department head, do you have any influence over encouraging other people to use this? Use the yeah. Site? yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I have lots of influence. I can't make them do it. Uh -huh. 
Well, why would we want that anyhow, right? But yeah, I can, yeah. I can, I can show it to them. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And we could think about how the writing project could support you to do that somehow. Yeah. So, yeah worth thinking. Yeah, about. I'm sure yeah. if I, if, you know, I'm sure depending on how I present it to them, and I'm able to incorporate whatever it is that they think is important or that our department thinks is important, mm -hmm. and I show that Youth Voices does that. You know what I mean? Then that would be a much more convincing. Yeah, and just to come back on what you said at the beginning, and I know we're running, we've run out of time, but um, I do think there's a question about how much time to spend on doing that profile stuff. Right. As I maxed out, getting, I maxed out getting, on that. Getting something, yeah, getting something out in the discussions kind of faster. Um, mm. But I do value the profile stuff too, so I don't know. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, it's I, like the creativity work I, I mean, as long as those kids get to come back next year to it, it makes sense. If they didn't get to come back next year to it, I wonder about it. That's mm -hmm. sort of how I think of it. Mm. Yeah, I Karen, you, you took lots of notes tonight. You good? Yeah, man, I got this whole first newsletter all sketched out, so I'll be sending you all, and like I, I'm, I'm up for Very lots cool. of feedback, so like I said, if it sucks, just tell me that. We'll all right, so next week we're going to be talking about hypothesis, um, which is hypothesis uh, in the dot .is at the end, um, which is an annotation tool, which if your, if, just to say, if your kids' posts are connected to a mission, Hypothesis comes up automatically on Youth Voices. It's set up to do that. Um, and there's lots of other integrations that we're thinking about. Profiles are also uh, automatically on Hypothesis. Um, so things we're going to play with. Uh, and it's all about social reading. But I definitely would want to invite you all back. Come anytime you'd like, but we'll plan a, a kind of a literature and connecting um, session soon. Thank you all for talking tonight. Mm -hmm. Good ideas. Um, and uh, we'll be here next week. As I said, uh, we're here every Wednesday uh, and uh, we are we broadcast over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set up. Thank you all. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Great nice meeting everybody. Yeah. Nice to yeah. meet you all. Talk to you soon. Good night. Good night.